Hi, this is Virendra Singh from toolsqa.com. I welcome you to class number one on Cucumber in Java. In this class, we will learn how to set up a Cucumber project uh, in a Java development environment. The tool that we will be using uh, would be Eclipse. Eclipse would be the tool of choice for the Java platform. Uh, however, whatever you learn in this class, is it's applicable to any other integrated development environment uh, of your choice. So with this in mind, let me quickly take you through uh, the agenda for the class. The agenda for this class is, first, we will learn how to set up Cucumber Java project uh, manually, in which we will download all the jars by ourselves, and then we will associate the jars with the project so that we can set up Cucumber in uh, for a Java project. So the whole, the whole process would be a manual process. Uh, I insist on the manual process for all the new beginners uh, so that they can understand what is required uh, by uh, required for setting up Cucumber project. Uh, then after that we will use a build tool uh, for setting up our project. Now the build tool that we will use would be Maven. So we will set up a Cucumber Java project using Maven. At the end we will write a small Cucumber test so that we can verify that our setup has worked properly. So with this in mind, uh, let us move forward. So setting up Cucumber manually, that is the first topic of this class. Uh, so how can we set up a project, a Cucumber project manually? Now that's a, that's a three-step process. All you have to do is create a new Java project in the IDE of your choice. Uh, in our case, it is Eclipse. Once you have created the project, you have to download all the jars which are required for the Cucumber tool and then at the end all you have to do is associate all the jars with uh, reference all the jars in your project. That's all you have to do. So uh, it's a three-step process. Let us quickly see how we can do that. First of all, open your Eclipse uh, development environment. Uh, once you open it, you will get onto a window something similar to this. Uh, so once you are here, all you have to do is just click on File, New, and do a Java project. So once you do a Java project, uh, a Create New Java Project window will come up. All you have to do is just give a name to the project. I will say Cucumber Learning is the project name. You can have a better name if you want. I usually accept the default values here. You can change the values according to your need, uh, but for the timing, we can just accept the default values. After that, click on Finish. Once you click on Finish, you will get a Cucumber project on the left-hand side in the Package Explorer window. Uh, in this project, you will have a source folder and the JRE system library folder. Right. So we have successfully done our first step, which is create a new Java project. Now let us move on to the next step, which is load uh, download Cucumber jars. How can we do that? So to understand what jars are required uh, for a Cucumber project, uh, we will first go to the next slide. In the next slide, I have detailed out the required jars. Now, Cucumber jars can be categorized into two uh, forms. The first one is the Cucumber core jars, which are the core Cucumber binaries that you require. And these are Cucumber core, Cucumber Java, Cucumber JUnit, Cucumber JVM, and Cucumber reporting. After that, there are some additional jars that are required. The additional jars uh, are Gherkin, Gherkin is the jar which is required to understand the Gherkin language. Now the Gherkin, lang Gherkin language is the one which you will use to write your Cucumber tests. So we will talk about Gherkin language in details in the coming classes, but for the time being just remember that Gherkin is the language in which we will write our Cucumber tests. So you would require a Gherkin jar. Uh, after that you would require a JUnit jar. Now JUnit jar is required because JUnit is the test running engine in Cucumber. That is what is responsible for running tests. That's why you require JUnit. Then there is a Mukito jar that is required which will do certain additional functionalities in Cucumber. So we have the name, names of jars in front of us. All we have to do is download them. So where can we download these jars from? Now you must, you all must have heard of uh, Maven. So we will just go to the Maven repository. We will say in Cucumber, we will just type in Maven repository. Once we do that, 
uh, we will get our Google search results. The very first result, mvnrepository.com is the one that we are looking for. Just click on that and you will reach to the Maven web page. Now here in the search, you will have to type in the name of jar file that you're looking for. So I have noted all the jar files in a notepad. So let us try to find Cucumber Core. So all you have to do is just type in Cucumber Core and search. When you search, you will get all the results related to Cucumber Core. Uh, we are specifically looking for the jar file, which is from info.cukes. These are the guys who are responsible for creating Cucumber. So just click on this jar. And then uh, once you click on uh, that link, you, you will be taken here onto this page where you will see a list of versions of Cucumber Core jar. Now, these versions, they start back from 1.0.0 to somewhere uh, to 1.2.4, which is the latest release. So all you have to do is just click on that and then it will take you to the downloads page. All you have to do is just right click on download jar and save link as. So you will get a save dialog box. Uh, you can choose where to save the file. I usually create uh, create a special folder for all my jars, uh, which is in the E drive. So I create create a folder called Java jars. In this, I create individual folders for individual category of jars. So in my case, uh, this is Cucumber tool. So I created a folder called Cucumber, and inside it, I saved all my jars. So uh, we we are saving Cucumber core right now. Uh, as you can see, I have already saved all the jars so that we can save them some time in the tutorial, in the video tutorial. So all you have to do is just repeat the process till you have downloaded all the jars and save it in, at a common place. In my case, it is e colon, Java jars, and Cucumber. So in your case, it could be any other place, but the point is that you save all the jars. Similarly, you can search for Cucumber Java, search for Cucumber Java, and it will show you the results of Cucumber Java jar. You are interested in the ones that come from info.cukes. So just click on this, click on the latest version that you have, 1.2.4, and then click on the download jar button or right click and save link as. So when you save link as, just move on to the folder where you want to save it and hit save. So once you have downloaded all the jars, uh, you will get something like this. So if I go back, to the Java jars folder, uh, you will get all the jars here at one common place, right? So uh, we are done with the second step also. We have just downloaded all the required jars. Now let us follow on and let us move to the third step. So the third step is reference all the jars in your project. Well, that's very simple. All you have to do is just go back to your project that we, that we created a few minutes ago. Uh, click on the project node, right click on it and go to properties. In the properties window, select the Java build path option on the left hand side, select Java build path and then here in the tabs, select libraries. Once you select libraries, you will get uh, a lot of options here. You will get your JRE system library, uh, which is referenced here in the main project. You will get that. Uh, in the libraries section. All you have to do here is click on add external jars. Once you add external jars, you have to navigate to the folder where you have downloaded all the jars. It is e colon java jars cucumber. There, select all by pressing control A and then click on open. Once you open it, you would see that all the jars are associated uh, with your project. They are referenced in your project. So once they are here, click on apply and click on OK. There you go. You would get another folder uh, in your project structure which will say referenced libraries. If you open that, you would see all the Cucumber libraries here, all the Cucumber jars here. So that's all. This is how you create a Cucumber project manually. Very simple. It's just a three-step process. The only tough task is to download all the Cucumber jars. But once you know how to set up a project manually, uh, you can be confident that you know about Cucumber more than the others know. So you know how to set up a Cucumber project manually. So that was it for the manual setup. That's all we have to do. Uh, now once the project is set up, we can go ahead and write our tests. But we will wait for that 
for a few more minutes and we will write a test at the end of the video tutorial. So let me just move on to the next slide then. The next slide says how to set up Cucumber manually. Well, this is basically the code jars. So the next slide says that how to set up Cucumber with Maven. Now Maven is a build tool. We all know uh, that Maven is a tool which helps us manage our project, manage the project dependencies. So uh, it's a very good tool. And this tool also relies on MVN repository to download all the required jars. Right? A Maven project will consist of an XML called pom.xml, which is pom.xml. Uh, it will be called pom.xml right here, what is mentioned here, uh, project object model.xml. In this XML, you have to specify what are the required dependencies that you want to add in the project. So the ones that we downloaded just now, here, all these dependencies, we just have to define these de dependencies in the pom.xml and the downloading part and associating it with the project part will be taken care by Maven. So let us quickly see how we can create a Maven project. So uh, we will go back to our uh, development environment which is Eclipse in our case. Uh, all we have to do is just click on File, New and this time don't select Java project, select Simple Project. Once you select Simple Project, it will give you a list of templates, list of project templates that you have on your system. What you are looking for is a template called Maven. So just select the Maven template, uh, just select the Maven folder. Inside the Maven folder there will be three templates. Uh, we are looking for a template called Maven project. So select the Maven project template, click on next. It will take you to a new Maven project window. I usually accept the default values here. So you accept the default values. And then, well, uh, you have to change this. So don't accept the default values. Just change this to uh, wherever you want to save the project. So I want to save the project in E colon Java projects. So I will accept this and I will move on to next. When you move on to next, it will ask you what kind of Maven project you want to create. There are a lot of Maven, uh, there are a lot of types of Maven projects that you can create. We are looking for a project which is a quick start type project where we can start the project quickly with minimum uh, dependencies associated with the project. So I will click on Maven quick start and I will do next. Once I do next, it will ask me for a group ID and an artifact ID. Now group ID is the name of the team or the organization that is creating this project. In our case, the name of the organization is, is Tools QA. So I will use Group ID as Tools QA and Artifact ID as the project name. Now I will give it a simple name for the time being, Cucumber Maven, let's say. You can give it a better name if you want. Once you have given the Artifact ID and the Group ID, click on Finish. It will take some time, but in a few seconds, it will create a project in your Package Explorer. If you open the project, you would see that it has a structure. In this structure, there is a file called pom.xml, form.xml, which stands for project object model.xml. Right, so this is the Maven project and this is the form of the project. So we will double click on the form and we will go to form.xml uh, here in the raw view. And in the raw view, you can see that this project has defined all its specification inside the XML file. It has defined the group ID, artifact ID, the type of output of the project, and the name of the project, right? Uh, the interesting part here is the dependencies node. The dependency, which is the plural form, uh, the dependencies node is the place where you have to update all the relevant jars that you require. For example, at this point in time, there is only one dependency in the project. The dependency is on JUnit and it is looking for a version 3.8.1 of the JUnit jar. So this is how you specify the dependency. You just add a dependency node, right? So in our case, we have to find all the dependency nodes uh, for a Cucumber project. I will delete this and then I will add all the dependencies that we require. 
which in our case would be all these binary all these binaries where or all these jar files now how would you get all the dependency uh, XML right so to do that all you have to do is just go to toolsqa.com on toolsqa.com go to tutorials and then go to cucumber in cucumber well before I go there uh, this is a place this is cucumber tutorials is a place where you can learn about cucumber uh, it's a complete set of tutorials just go through all these sections one by one it is arranged beautifully in in the order of progression where from it starts from beginners and it ends up in the expert level uh, you would see that we have introduced data driven testing also in this so it starts from basics and it moves towards the advanced stuff so if you want to learn cucumber really well you can also refer to uh, the website here so in this uh, structured uh, documentation uh, you have to find a link called download cucumber for eclipse click on that and you would see that uh, you have all the uh, this tutorial talks about all the jars that are required the very first thing that you get is the list of jars that are required right you can copy the names from here and it also talks about how you can download it from maven and how you can uh, associate it in your project like what we discussed a few minutes ago and at the end it talks about the maven form now this is the form that is required it is just the dependency node uh, dependencies node so all you have to do is just copy this and paste it in the project that you created just now so all you have to do is just go somewhere here uh, click on copy and then do a control C once you do control C you go back to the project and in between the dependencies node in between this XML part just paste all your dependencies once you do that you are all set up for a, a maven cucumber project that's all you have to do now once the dependencies are specified that's all we need uh, but there is a there is one point that I want to point out these dependencies are older dependencies because the tutorial was written a few months back uh, you would see that the dependency version is 1.1.5 for cucumber Java but as we saw a few minutes ago that cucumber Java has now a version of uh, 1.2.4 so you would want to update the dependency here so all you have to do is just update the version number to 1.2.4 and it should be fine right but I would strongly suggest that if you update the version of one file I would request you to update the version of all of the files as well just to avoid any compatibility issues so we have this uh, project setup which is in Maven now let us see what we have to do now we in this project we have just specified the dependencies node we now have to build the project so that all the dependencies are downloaded by maven from the maven repository so to do that uh, go to the run, run command type cmd and then navigate to the place where this project is present so in my case it would be e colon java projects cucumber maven there you go so I'm inside the project now I'm inside the project node cucumber maven if I do a dir you would see that there is a form.xml right once you have form.xml here all you have to do is mvn clean install and hit enter once you hit enter it will analyze your uh, your project object model form it will analyze your form it will look for all the dependencies if it is able to find the dependencies on your local system then it will not download it otherwise it will download the dependencies from maven repository in my case all the dependencies are present on the system that's why you don't see anything which says downloading here in the logs right but in your case it might start downloading it from the maven repository so don't worry about it it will take a few minutes or a few seconds to download all the dependencies depending on your internet connection and once it has downloaded all the dependencies it will say build success so there we go we have just set up uh, a cucumber Java project in maven all right so that was the second part of our tutorial where we wanted to set up a cucumber Java project in Maven so at this point we know how to set up a project a cucumber project manually and we also know how to set up a cucumber project 
through Maven. Let us move on to the third part of the tutorial. The third part is writing our first test. Writing our first test requires us to have a knowledge of feature files. Now feature files are the files in which you write Cucumber tests. Cucumber tests are written in a language called Gherkin, which is English-like language. It looks very similar to English. It is almost uh, equal to English. There is like there are there are a few constructs that Gherkin language gives, but rest of it is pure English. So we will talk about feature files in the coming classes. So at this point in time, just understanding that there is a feature file and in the feature file we write Cucumber tests, that should be enough. So the first thing to write our test would be to have a feature file. Once we have a feature file, we would require a test runner to run the feature file. So let us create both feature file and a test runner to uh, see whether our project setup was successful or not. So I will jump back to Eclipse and I will pick up the project uh, which was set up manually. And in this project, I will create a folder. I will create a folder called features. And in this folder, I will keep all my feature files, which is all my Cucumber tests. The reason I create a, a separate folder is that all the feature files are segregated at one place. They don't, uh, they don't barge into the source code. That's why I create a separate folder. And I think it's a good practice to have a separate features folder. So in the features folder, all you have to do is just right click and say new and then file. And say that I want to create a file inside the features folder. Now, uh, all the feature files in Cucumber has to end with an extension dot feature. So I would say, uh, I want to create a sample feature file, so I would name it something like this, sample dot feature. Now, uh, the name could be anything, but the extension has to be dot feature. If the extension is not dot feature, Cucumber will, will ignore this file. So you have to make sure that, that the extension is dot feature. Once you do that, click on finish and it will create a feature file for you, right? Don't worry about this Visual Studio window. Uh, we can ignore this. All right, so this is the feature file folder. All you have to do is just right click on it and say open with and select text editor. So once you select text editor, the file opens up in Cucumber, uh, opens up in the Eclipse environment only. So I will expand it. Now, once you have the feature file, we have to add something here. We have to add a test, right? So all the feature files, they start with the keyword feature to specify what kind of feature it is testing. A feature represents the application area in your uh, application. For example, it could be login feature. So I would simply say uh, login feature. And in the login feature, then you would want to add a scenario. So you would say scenario and then you will name the scenario. For example, valid login. This is the name of the scenario, right? Or you can have a better name. You can say that verify that user is able to log in using a valid username and password. You can even have a better uh, name. So uh, I will correct the spelling verify all right so once you have the scenario in front of you you will need to add some steps right so all the steps in cucumber they start with a keyword so given is a keyword so you would say given a user is on tools QA login page login page this is first step then user is able to then then is again a keyword so you would say user is able to log in successfully that is the second step in your test so basically this is what a feature file looks like it is plain english right we have plain english construct we are expressing our test in a very english like language uh, and it is quite clear and concise. So we have clearly said that 
the scenario states that a user should be able to log in using a valid username and password. We have also stated uh, that the first step to perform should be that a user should be on Tools QA login page. The second step should be that user should be able to log in using uh, uh, using a username and password. So basically, we have just expressed a test uh, in in a feature file, a dot feature file, right? So once you have exp uh, once you have uh, created a feature file, uh, then we have to perform the next step, which is create a test runner. Now a test runner is basically the class responsible for picking up your feature files and then executing those feature files. So we have to create a test runner also. As the name suggest, suggests, test runner, it means it will run your tests, right? So to create a test runner, go to the source folder, right click on it, do a new and add a class. I usually uh, I usually put my test runner in a package called test runners and inside it I say cucumber uh, runner. This is the class name and then I accept the default values. Once I do that it creates a class for me which is cucumber runner and it is inside a package called test runner. Now you have just created a class but at this point in time it is a basic class it has no significance uh, it's just a class so for your cucumber tool to understand it and to understand it as the entry point your point for your test you have to annotate the class properly so the very first annotation would be run with and then inside run with you would say uh, i want to i want you to run this class using a class called cucumber.class once you do that uh, you you would see that an automatic import happens. The import happens from cucumber.api.junit and the class that has been imported is called cucumber. Now you would see an error message in run with. So hover over run with and it will give you a suggestion to import org.junit.runner. So just import that as well. So once you have imported uh, both the packages, you would see that there is no error. Right. So you have just created a cucumber test runner class now once you have created the test runner class you should also have a good understanding of what this particular piece of code means right so this particular code means that you have just created a simple class and you have specified that this class when you when you start with this class you have to actually go to the cucumber dot class uh, cucumber class which is located inside the cucumber.api.junit package. Now if you go to your reference libraries and here if you go to cucumber junit, if you click on that you would see that there is a package called cucumber.api.junit. Right? This is the package. Inside this package there is a class called cucumber.class. So all we have informed our test runner is that the entry point which is cucumber runner it should have uh, it should start a class called cucumber class when when it starts the test run right so once you have specified this you ha also have to specify cucumber options options now in cucumber options you would specify what exactly you are looking for so uh, let me just import this thing uh, you have to specify add the rate cucumber options so let us import the package. It states that this cucumber options is present inside cucumber.api. Just select this package and it will import cucumber.api also. Now uh, what what is cucumber options? Basically cucumber, cucumber options is a way to specify uh, the settings of your test, run, test engine. You are specifying uh, information to the test engine so that it can take that information and start your test. So the very first thing that you would want to inform your uh, Cucumber uh, test runner is that where the feature files are located. So we have created a different folder for feature files. So we would want to inform uh, our test engine that all the feature files are located inside a folder called feature. So we said all the feature files are located inside a folder called feature. Features. S. Features. Right. Then after that we would also want to specify where 
the actual test code is. Right, so we can specify the test code with the keyword glue, but don't worry about it if you don't understand it right now because in the next class we will talk in details about glue code. So for the time being, just specify that all the glue code is present inside uh, test code folder. Right, just for, for the sake of it to be here, we will specify that all the glue code is present inside test code folder. Now pay attention that we don't have any test code folder. Right, so we expect that our uh, test run would give us some error. Right, so don't worry about if uh, worry about the errors. But for the time being, uh, we know that this is how we can give options to our Cucumber running engine. Right, through the Cucumber options annotation. Here we have specified that all our feature files are inside the features folder, which is this folder, and we have said that glue code is inside a folder called test code. Now test code is not present, so obviously we will get an error. But at this point, we are all ready to start a test run. We have created our test runner class. We have created our feature file. Now let us try to run our uh, test code. So all we have to do is just right click on the Cucumber runner and say run as and say JUnit test. When you run that, you would get some error message on the console. Well, this is not the right error message. So just give me a minute and let me see why we did not get the right error message. All right. All right. So uh, it seems that the problem uh, that was causing it to not run is basically that in the, in the features file, uh, we had given a wrong syntax. So it's not given colon, it's given and then. There is no colon after that. So basically, uh, there was a syntax problem in the feature file, but if you correct the syntax problem and then go back to your Cucumber test runner and then do a right click and run as JUnit test, and then it should run your test. Once it runs your test, you should get something like this on your console window. If you are getting something like this, it means that your setup was successful. Now, how to verify this? The first thing that you have to do is on the left-hand side, you will get your JUnit uh, results window. In the JUnit results window, if you open this, you would see that it has uh, it has an entry for your sample feature. The feature is login feature. And if you further open it, you would see that it has a scenario present inside it. So if you look at it, uh, the scenario, if you look at the scenario, this is exactly what is written there. Verify that a user is able to log in. Verify that a user is able to log in. That is, a, that is exactly present there. And if you further click on it, it will have two steps. Given a user, given a user is able to log in successfully. So basically, uh, right now, Cucumber was able to find your feature file. It was able to parse it correctly. It was able to uh, go through it correctly. Uh, and it was able to identify that there is a feature inside it, uh, which is this, which is this. And it was able to identify that there is a scenario inside the feature file, which is this and it was able to identify that there were two steps inside the feature, inside the scenario, and these are the two steps. So basically this is how you create uh, a Cucumber Java test, and this is how you can verify that the setup was correct. All right, so with this in mind, and with this learning, uh, I would request you to just go back and create a project yourself, create it manually, create it with Maven, and then write a small feature file. Uh, for the time being, you don't know much about the feature file, so I would request you to just uh, copy this stuff and paste it here, and then copy uh, the test runner class, and then it's all good to go. Just right click on the test runner class and do a run as JUnit test, and it should give you the following error message. In the next class, we will understand what this error message is, and we will also understand what a feature file is and we will also go deep into understanding what a test runner is so in the next class you we will jump into cucumber and we will try to learn the basics of cucumber so i hope this class was uh, a good learning for you uh, for the for the next class uh, i have just discussed the agenda so let us see uh, let us meet in the next class thank you